So tonight, what we're going to talk about is not what you say, it's how you say it. And we're going to go over a lot of things. Things I'm going to cover tonight is never ask a no question. The other thing we're going to talk about is alternative choice questions, because you're not going to get a no answer from that. And then I'm going to teach you something that I've used. And uh, believe me, I know when you guys are going to be using it because you're going to be closing me all the time. It's called the 18 tie-down statements. And I must say, you must listen twice as much of what you say out there. It's very, very important to do that. So those are the things we're going to cover. Before we go into that, I want you to write down or remember some important verbiage that I use all the time when I'm talking. Just key words and key phrases. I, use, I always say, you know, we're disruptive technology, innovative technology. I always say the possibilities are endless. The, the, we have the world's smartest business card. It's the ultimate marketing tool. It's your personal portal. It's the only up-to-date database in the world. Not even your cell phone has an up-to-date database. Uh, I'll also say it saves you time, both time and money, and you never lose your database. It increases your, your bottom line sales, and your networking happens more effectively. So, you know, these are just some of the things that I say. And another thing I say is that it'll enhance your business. I have something that will enhance your business. People don't like to be sold anything. They want to enhance their business. And every business has a database. Most businesses don't access it to its fullest potential. So with that, is when you're going out and you're talking to people, this is very, very key. Start asking questions. Don't ever start selling and telling them what you have for them. If you do that, you've already lost. And I'll tell you what, I've been out with several of you on calls and I watch you do it and I'll tell you, 3% of the people, you got to be in the 3%. I'm going to, I, I want to make t-shirts up that say, I am a 3%er. Because only 3% of the people really get it out there. They out earn the other 97%. And it was really odd this, this week when I was in church yesterday. They were talking about it, and the same thing came up to 3%. They said, oh, yeah, 78% say that they're, they're religious or Christian. Yeah, and 38% have been accepted it. But guess what? Only 3% come to church and give. So it just shows you that it boils down to everything in life. It's, it's true in sales. It's true in everything. As far as motivational books, only 3% of the population read it. So be a 3%er here. So closing sales, you start with leading questions. So what you, what you want to do is you want to ask them a question. You know, how are you generating your sales now what type of advertising are you running to get the people walk through the door i'll ask them that uh I'll, I'll ask them what does it cost you for customer acquisition what does it cost you and what does that mean what what does it cost you to get a customer to walk in the door and purchase something in your business i don't know if you know what it costs in the car industry but to get a person to walk through the door, those car dealers spend $300 just to get them to walk through the door. When we were putting together our business, 
I had one of our developers that I signed a contract with, he kept asking me, he says, what's your customer acquisition cost? I said, I have zero. He goes, no. He says, you don't, you don't get what I asked you, Alan. He says, what does it cost you to get a customer? I says, it doesn't cost me anything. <laughs> you know, it's hard for people to realize that it doesn't cost us any money to get a customer because it's all word of mouth advertising. So we're not spending money. So, you know, for instance, I'm gonna give you a couple other examples. Uh, if you were going into a store, some, you would ask somebody, what is it that brought you into our store today? You know, what you wanna do is create a conversation. Or if you're going into a gym, what are your fitness goals? Someone may ask you. Or when, when you want to decor your home and do it, what type of decor do you have in mind for your home if you're walking into a furniture store? You see, if you don't know what your customer's needs are, how do you know what to sell them? And what happens is when you go in there and you start telling them about your card and you're telling them all the features, which we do have an amazing product. I mean, nobody on the planet has what we have, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up telling them something that turns them off, and then they say, no, I'm not interested. And then you have nowhere to go from that point forward. So don't ever, you know, let them walk you into the corner keep asking questions on how our product can help them. It's, it's sort of like you're diagnosing your clients like a doctor. You know, think about it. Um, you know, people trust doctors. They usually accept the diagnosis and prescriptions for wellness with a few questions asked. That's why they recognize doctors as experts in the field. So what you want to do, your goal is to have your client see you in the same way. So if you're diagnosing them what you need to find out what they need and you provide them with it, what you want to do is instead of telling them every feature on the card, if you listen to what they tell you, you're going to give them what they ask for. That is really key to the, to the whole thing. Like, so I say to a lot of people, how are you generating sales right now? What form of advertising are you using? How much do you spend for customer acquisition? How do you track your database? Because all we know what we have, it does all that. So then when I, I tell them, let me show you a tool how you can enhance your business and pick the features out that'll help them. So that's, that's the whole thing. So how do we do that? This, this is very key. And let me tell you something, the way business is being done today, <laughs> it's moving at a fast pace. For example, in a car dealership, just to let you know how business is changing, that's why we have something everyone needs. When you go into a car dealership, do you know that 40% of the people who are buying a car today, after the salesman gives them the price and sits down and talks to them, they take out their cell phone, they say, give me a few minutes. They go get their phone out and they go check to see if the price and all the features and everything on the car that the salesman's given them to see if it's the best price. And guess what? Do you know it, it's 40% of the consumers do that today? And do you know what the rate is as far as millennials? It's 66% of them do that. So they're checking to see if they got the best deal. So that's why it's very important that people use our tool because where are they looking now? They're looking on the cell phone. So what you want to do is you want to learn how to use tie-down statements. 
And uh, it's very important, I'm gonna give you the 18 tie down statements. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask them a question and the answer will always be yes. It's always yes. Well, let's, let's face it, guys. You're all smart individuals, aren't you? But what are you gonna say? No, I'm not. I just use the tie down statement. So what are the tie down statements? The first one is, aren't they? The second one is, aren't you? Can't you? Couldn't it? Doesn't it? Don't we? Shouldn't it? Wouldn't you? Haven't they? Hasn't he? Isn't it? Isn't that right? Didn't it? Wasn't it? Won't they? Hasn't she? Won't you? Don't you agree? I'll tell you. My wife got so good at it. She was my ex-wife. She was closing me all the time at the store. Anything she wanted, she goes, don't you agree, Alan? Of course I agree. <laughs> I said, well, you cut it out. <laughs> So I know you guys are going to, and what you have to do is make it part of your daily verbiage routine of everything you do. And when you become good at this, you will be great. So there's a few different ways to use the statements. You know, like if you're, if you're out talking to somebody about V-Card, you, after you get done talking about the benefits, in the features, you're, you might ask them a question like, you see all these amazing features, you see how it could enhance your business, don't you? Well, what are they gonna say? Of course they're gonna say yes, because first of all, you asked the leading question, and then you gave them what they want. And when they see it enhancing their business, of course they're gonna say yes. They're gonna definitely agree with you. And there's a few ways that you can use the statement. So you don't wanna always use it ending in, in the sentence, you want to use it in the beginning and you want to put it in the middle of the sentence. So I'm going to give you a, a, couple, a couple things, just using a, a car sales or something. A reputation for excellent service after the sale is important in making the decision, isn't it? Well, what are they going to say? Of course it is. It, you're talking to the people in the car in the car dealership and then inverted what you're going to say is you're going to say the same question but you're going to say it in a different way isn't a reputation for service after the sales important in making the decision so you ask them a question with it in the beginning of the sentence now let's use it in the middle of the sentence so just remember all these 18 tally down statements, you can either use in the beginning or at the end or in the middle. Here is it in the middle. A reputation for excellent service after the sales important, isn't it? In making this decision. So now what you wanna do is you wanna mix them up when you're talking to people so they don't know that you're closing. So you don't want to always end it with that, with a question. You want to start it with a question too. <clears throat> so use an inverted uh, tie down or, or lead the question with it. And once you learn these and you, and you start working with them using the tie downs, will become a speech habit, will improve your business and your earnings. Um, it, it's helped me an immensely as far as what I do. I use it every day, all the time, and no matter where I am, I'm always asking for the sale. You always got to be closing, and it's got to start with the closing statement right up front. Ask a question when you start so you know what their needs are. 
you know, when you when you when you go into the doctor's office, what do they say? They say, "Well, how you been feeling? How long have you been feeling that way? Where does the pain hurt?" <laughs> You know, what, what they're doing, they don't know how to diagnose you until you tell them exactly what's wrong with you. And it's the same thing. When you get a massage, they'll say, well, do you have stress here? Do you have stress there? Where do you want me to focus in on you and all that? So what you want to do is when you go in, because we're going to come out with a corporate program here at the end of this month. That's why I want to give you a little bit of time to start practicing it. Because when you go into businesses, you, I, I want you to understand, and even what you're doing right now, you should be using this on a daily basis. Because when you go on the businesses, you, it's not about selling them. It's fulfilling a need that they have. And you've got to find out what that need is. If you don't know what the need is, they get salesmen. Everybody gets salespeople around their business all day long. They usually have a gatekeeper and you got to get through the gatekeeper. So what you want to do is you want to help people. Don't try to sell them. So that's very important to use a tie down statement. Another thing that I like to use a lot too is an alternative choice question. See, you never want to ask a no question. See, if I ask you, uh, are you available Monday? What can you say to that question? You can say no. No, I'm not. Well, where do you go from a no? You've got to speak again and ask another question. So if I was going to talk to you and I would say, are you available Monday or Tuesday? And they'll say Tuesday. I'll say morning or afternoon. They'll say afternoon. I'll say, would one or three be better for you? You see, I never revert back and ask them a single choice because they can come back and say no to me. So they'll, they'll say, and if it isn't good for them, they'll come back with two, let's just say Monday or Tuesday isn't good for them. So you go, would Monday or Tuesday be better for you? And, and they'll, they'll say, you know what, Alan, Monday or Tuesday won't be good for me. Wednesday will be better. And then what would, what would be your next statement to them? Morning or afternoon? <laughs> because I'm back to asking an alternative choice question. That's what's really important. I'll, I'll tell you, it works all the time. Tie down statements, don't you agree, shouldn't you, couldn't you, can't you see? And they go, yes, yes, yes. If you start getting them saying yes in the beginning, when it comes for the sale, I never say, well, do you want to sign up? I'll say, do you want to put that on your MasterCard or Visa? Again, an alternative choice question. There is no reason. Why each of you, when you go talk to somebody about V-Card, that they at least, they might want to try it, that you don't go in and you, you sign them up for the 30-day trial so that they can see how it works for them. There is no reason why you walk out of there and everyone you talk to should be on at least the 30-day trial. And you know the 30-day trial Cherie is getting done writing the program here this week that's going to come out that is going to market to the 30-day card trial. So if, if they say, you know what, Alan, let, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them well, here, get the 30-day trial, boom, sign up, put them on there. Of course, I'm always closing. Let's get your business started. Because the tools that you have now, what? We have the QR code, the, they had their business card, but now every person with business, I, I'm telling you, when you show them the short code, if you haven't purchased short codes yet, co-purchase them at least one time and play around with it 
and see how impactful that is. I mean, it's off the charts. Uh, Steve Remondini and I went to a meeting, a couple, a, a couple of meetings this past week, and we, we met with some very powerful people in the business world. And they took down how I share my card now every time. I say, oh, just text me to, just text Alan Lowe to 80800, and boom, the card comes. They go, this is amazing. So you see, when you go into a business, whether it be a restaurant or whether it be a, uh, a hair salon or a car dealership, let me tell you something. Every business in the world should have a V card because this is what could happen. Do you know how much it costs them to get customer acquisition and get a database? And what about the walk-by people? Look at the restaurants. Let's just pick the restaurants. I mean, people are recommended restaurants and stuff like that, and people are in and out of their doors all day long. And yet they don't know the people sitting in those seats. And they walk out the door and their marketing is done with them. They have no way to market to those people. So if you get them a card and show them the feature of the short code here in the United States, that how that could be used, there is no reason why any business wouldn't do that because you want to know the customer acquisition costs for that because you have an opt-in lead is three cents. <laughs> because remember, you get a thousand, a thousand short codes for $30, right? Which means it costs you three cents to capture their number. And you, what you do, is when they take down the card that they can follow, it goes right into your editor and you click on the short code, it tells you the phone number that just took down your card and you can market to that person now. That is huge. I think every everyone, everyone should do that. So some of the techniques you know, as far as what I went over to tonight, as far as some of the features on the card and the features of yet to come that businesses are going to want to know about is the QR code. They're going to want to know that the database is always up to date. They're going to want to know about the short code here in the U.S. because their customer acquisition fee is practically nothing, three cents, and they can market to that database. And, um, and those are some points that you, that you want to have. There isn't a reason why a business wouldn't do that and, and uh, have that out there. Because I know our competition is charging $250 to set them up just with a short code and charges them 50, 60, 100 bucks a month for it. And they don't have a card, and there's no way that people can get specials. And now we have follow me features on the card that are going to be coming out this month, and they're in testing right now of events. So when an event comes up, they motivational speakers can put it on it, or restaurants, if they have a band coming in, they can put it on. And when you take their card down and have it in your app, it'll notify you that they have a band coming in. Or if there was a menu change, uh, we just updated all the RSVP. Go in and see exactly what we're doing. We're going to come out with an amazing, you know, read your newsletter every, every Sunday night because it's packed full of stuff that are current. And we're just getting started. We must have a list of a hundred other things on there that we're going to do to this card. I mean, you have no idea what's going to happen in the next year, but this is just the start and it's amazing. Everyone we show the card to, they, they can't believe it. So what you're doing is you're always closing. 
I want to go over one more thing. It's very critical because I'm with a lot of you and I see what happens and this happens way too much. There is one single most critical instruction that I could ever give you in selling and it's this. Whenever you ask a closing question, anytime you ask a question to your prospect, shut up. The next person that talks, do you know the, these are statistics. The average salesperson out there can't stay quiet for longer than 10 seconds. That's a fact because they get nervous. They get, and I'll tell you what, you know who owns it? If they talk, you do. Don't ever say, when I had this training back in 1980, when I was in real estate, I got done present, I remember the day. I remember who was training me. I remember sitting at the closing table and I sat there for 25 minutes and not a person said a word at the table. When I got done presenting, it was a fourplex on return on investment, ROI. I got done presenting the facts and I just sat there. 25 minutes later, they spoke. And when I got done with that, my sales trainer, her name was Wendy Fine Silver. <laughs> I remember it very well. She says, I can't believe you said that. She says, amazing. She says, you did exactly what you're supposed to do. She goes, I'm going to give you a gold star. So believe me, when you're done asking the question, whatever question it is, don't say the next word. Because guess what? As soon as you say it, you own the product, they're not buying it. That's the biggest problem out there. People don't ask questions up front. They go in and try to sell them something. What happens is when you do that, you're going to tell them something that they don't want to hear. And guess what? You're not going to get the sale. And that's what makes your job so tough. <laughs> so some of the stuff that I went over here, if you want to research it, I'm going to put all this in writing too eventually, and we're going to put it on PDF forms, and we're going to do training here. But I learned a lot of this from Tommy Hopkins. And when you, when you Google him, you'll find a lot of this information online. I, I've been on cruises with a guy and all that. Uh, when, when I was in real estate, there was two of us in the office. We were brand new. And within a month or two months, we were number one and two people in an office with 20 or 30 people in it. I mean, we were, we were making outrageous money. Everybody was making about one quarter of what we make a year in the office, and they've been there for 10 or 15 years. It's, you have to practice these things. I mean, when you get good at it, I mean, you'll see people coming in in your business and you'll see your check going up. So remember, the most single critical thing that I could get everybody is probably a 25 cents piece of duct tape. And you put, after you get done talking, you just put it over your lips. You know, I tell that all the time. But these are just some things. So what you wanna do is you wanna review um, the tie down statements always open with closing quick cl you're always closing the prospects so you're going to ask them questions up front to see what their needs are people are buying what they need they aren't buying the benefits and the features on a card although the the features are good and what you want to do is you listen to them what they need and how it's going to enhance their business and those are the features that you highlight first. You don't go over the other stuff because they're, they're, they're telling you what they're interested in. I always tell people when I've looked at opportunities and been a consultant, 
I said, let's assume the opportunity's great. Let's assume the company's well-funded. Let's assume they got a great management team. Show me how I make mine. And that's what I tell people. And then people start talking about the products and everything else. And I said, you didn't listen to me. I'm telling you how to close me. That's why you ask the, the questions up front. They're, if you listen to them, they're telling you how to close them. And that's, all, that's what they want. you got to give them the information that they need. So ask a closing statement. Ask questions up front. Use tie-down statements. Use alternative choice questions. And when you get done talking, don't say a word. The next person who asks the question owns the product. And there shouldn't be anyone, and I mean anyone that you talk to, isn't at least walking away with a 30-day trial. Because now once you have them in a 30-day trial, what do you have? You have a prospect that you can start marketing to. And we have an email campaign written of, I believe it's five or six emails to go out to them within 30 days. So we're going to actually help you close your prospects that go that way. So I want to thank you for joining and listening to this call. We wish you the very best and we'll see you all at the top. Have a great night now.